Longtime Trump aide and former White House communications director Hope Hicks has been called to the stand in the former president's hush money trial. Hicks was once Trump's closest and most trusted aide in both the Trump organization and the White House, with her office just steps from the Oval Office. Her name has already been mentioned multiple times throughout this trial, and now we are waiting to see Hicks take the stand. Uh, this comes after questioning from a few witnesses already today and, and a debate over the gag order. Trump yesterday while leaving court told cameras that he would not testify because the gag order prevented him from doing so. The judge cleared that up today, reminding Trump that he has the absolute right to testify and the gag order does not affect that. Let's bring in senior reporter Catherine Falders, along with attorney Adam Schlehet from the Fordham University School of Law for more. Uh, Catherine, what's the latest in the courtroom? Well, from our team in the courtroom, it appears that Hope Hicks has just entered the courtroom and, and took a seat at the witness stand. We don't have any information about what she's saying yet because this literally just started. But as you mentioned, Diane, she's one of Trump's former uh, most trusted advisors, not only at the Trump Organization, the campaign, for example, but also in the White House. And there are certain instances that prosecutors uh, want to talk to her about, including that August uh, 2015 meeting in Trump Tower between David Pecker, Michael Cohen and Donald Trump, uh, where this scheme uh, about being tr the Trump campaign's eyes and ears was allegedly discussed. Now, there's been testimony that she wasn't there specifically when that was discussed, that she had left that meeting early, but she's certainly somebody who has been on the sidelines, if you will, in a lot of these meetings, that while she might not have been totally involved in the decision making, uh, that she uh, was there as a witness, for example, to witness what was going on. Certainly, prosecutors are going to ask her uh, about that. That. We'll just have to see what comes uh, out of the courtroom. But she is crucial to them in, in that way. So she's currently on the stand. I'm not sure how long she will be on the stand. Uh, but prosecutors will start uh, doing their direct examination, if you will, here shortly. Adam, what are you watching for in Hope Hicks' testimony? Because uh, unlike some of these custodial witnesses that we've seen, this is someone very close to former President Trump and whose name has been mentioned throughout this trial already several times before she even made it to the stand. Yeah, and when you see footage of Donald Trump, she's been a fixture in uh, his life, often standing right next to him all the time. So I think they're looking for this witness to corroborate a lot of what's already been uh, testified about. Um, and I think that they're going to hope that she comes off as very credible with no real axe to grind and no agenda. And Catherine, what can you tell us about Hope Hicks' relationship with Donald Trump and how it evolved over the years? Because she worked for both the White House and the Trump administration, but doesn't work for any companies affiliated with Trump anymore. So what was their relationship like and what do we know about it now? Oh, right. So she was one of his most trusted aides. She came to uh, Trump after being recruited by Ivanka Trump. Uh, she later expanded as head of communications for the Trump Organization and, as you know, was there uh, during the 2016 campaign, went to the White House, then had a brief stint outside of the White House before coming back. So she's been in his inner circle uh, for quite some time. Now, I, I will just say from our team, the dispatches from court is that she's on the stand. Uh, she says she's really nervous. Um, our team says that Trump watched her as she walked in and took the stand, but she didn't turn around uh, and look at him. She's still closely connected uh, to Trump world in lots of ways, but surely that relationship has frayed a bit. She doesn't work for him anymore. But the main point that prosecutors want to get to is this crucial time period leading up to the 2016 campaign, what was going on in the White House as well. And there's no one better than Hope Hicks to tell those stories. And, Adam, while the previous witness was on the stand, the jury saw some conflicting evidence. First, a video of Trump apologizing in the wake of the Access Hollywood tape where he said that he would grab women. Uh, but then these tweets that followed saying that it was totally made-up nonsense and phony stories. So what's the big takeaway with all these posts from the prosecution? Well, the prosecution is trying to establish with that first uh, tape that he really cared about this, and this was something that he needed to address on the campaign trail, right? This was all goes to his state of mind at the moment when he chose uh, to pay uh, Stormy Daniels for her silence. So if he's doing it because he's concerned about how this would affect his election, then it's campaign in interference.
And, and Adam, we have seen several people testify now who have said that they are under subpoena and that their attorneys are being paid for by Trump or the Trump organization. Here we have Hicks saying that she's there under subpoena too, but she's paying for her own attorneys. Why is it important to point that out? Well, it shows that she's independent, right? It shows that she's there for uh, to help nobody, right? She's there, and she's there by subpoena, meaning she doesn't want to be there. She needs to be there. She's there under penalty, right? So she's testifying, and she could be a very powerful witness because she could come off as very likable, very reasonable, very rational. And if she's corroborating things that the other less credible witnesses are saying, that really buttresses the prosecution's narrative. And Karen, uh, Catherine, that includes conversations directly with Michael Cohen about this issue. So talk to me about some of the pieces of this puzzle that the prosecution is going to try to get out of Hope Hicks, Hicks in this testimony. It, it does, exactly what you were saying. It bolsters some of those conversations, or at least that it should. We talked about that 2015 meeting. Uh, there was also that testimony from David Pecker uh, that Hicks and another White House official at the time, this was Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who, as you remember, was Donald Trump's press secretary for a time, um, called him in March of 2018 to strategize about the National Enquirer's contract with Playboy model Karen McDougal. So we're going to hear uh, about that 2018 incident. There's a number of things, as you mentioned, uh, that probably prosecutors want to talk to her about. So that would be one of them in to perhaps bolster some of the credibility of Cohen's ultimate testimony, which is really a lot of what prosecutors have been trying to do so far, because there is a realization uh, that Cohen, given he has been convicted of lying, is potentially not the most credible witness. So a lot of these witnesses they will use as trying to bolster some of what Cohen says uh, down the road. And Catherine, she just testified that she was last in communication with Donald Trump in the summer or the fall of 2022. What do you make of that, given how close they used to be? They used to be described as having a father-daughter relationship. And I know you covered a lot of that directly. So what do you think about hearing that they haven't spoken in two years? I mean, it's definitely quite a shift, and it really represents how somebody so close in his inner circle for years, by the way, she started working for him, I believe it was a few years after college, so for years at the Trump Organization, the campaign, and at the White House, has really severed, if you will, uh, that relationship with him. I mean, that's about, almost about uh, two years ago, and she's obviously uh, transitioned out of the work uh, for Trump, but it does represent quite a shift from somebody who was right there in that inner circle and perhaps knows Donald Trump and has observed him in multiple different instances really more than anyone. We're told that Trump is looking right at Hicks intently as she's testifying here. Adam, how crucial is this witness to the prosecution? Well, I mean, Hope Hicks could really be the anti-Michael Cohen, right? Michael Cohen talks incessantly, probably driving the prosecutors crazy. Hope Hicks has been completely silent. She's had no contact with Trump. She has her own lawyer. She's there because she has to be there. And if she can really maintain that kind of distance from the facts and is just there to tell you what happened, her credibility could be absolutely essential in making sure that the jury doesn't need to trust Michael Cohen. All right, Catherine Falders, Adam Schlehet, thank you both.